Hey, hey, everyone. This is the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. We are all way harder on ourselves than others are. I mean, when we look in the mirror, we actually see something completely different than what our friends or lovers or even strangers see. And I know this is true because, you know, often I'll go into dressing rooms of clients, obviously what I do with the makeovers, and they'll try on a new outfit. And it's amazing to me because they'll stare at themselves in the mirror and they still don't see themselves as, say, I do or others do until I take a picture. And then I show them, you know, the before picture and the after side by side. And it's then and only then when people will finally see it. And so for me, this is a metaphor, not just how we view ourselves physically, but even our perception within ourselves, how we think. So it's not just the way we look, but it's the way we think about ourselves. And it's often because we focus on things we don't like rather than what we do like. And come on, you have to be honest with that. Usually we'll look in the mirror or we'll think about ourselves. And this is, you know, I did a whole podcast on the gremlins and we'll think of the things that are not going right or not being good enough or whatever it is. And that will completely get in your own way. So, you know, going back to the dressing room example, this is a perfect example of how this plays out. There was this woman who I worked with and I kid you not, she had a smoking body. Okay. So any man listening, like she had the curves, she had like that womanly figure that is just to die for, but she did not see it. And of course she was wearing a lot of the clothes that was hiding this magnificent figure of hers until we went into the dressing room. And I found this green dress, okay? And it really, like, it fit her figure to a T. But not only that, the color really, like, enhanced her eyes and it flattered her skin tone. She looked amazing. And she dressed, you know, she walked out of that dressing room. And I, like, literally, you could hear a pin drop. Everybody was just (laughs) staring at her. And she has this look on her face. And I said, Oh my God, like, like every, you're stopping everybody in their tracks. This looks amazing on you. What's that look about? And she said, I hate it. I said, really? So what do you hate about this dress? And she said, you see this? And she pointed to this little lump on the side of her hip. And she said, this is so gross. Like you can see my lumps. I said, well, I, I see how you, you know, you see that, but I'm, I'm telling you, honestly, no one else sees that, but you, I actually caught, I I named the syndrome. I might've talked about this before, but I just want to highlight, I call it the zit syndrome. Okay. It's like when you look in the mirror and you see a zit and it looks ginormous to you and it hurts and you think everybody is noticing you, but really I mean, in reality, the truth is nobody sees it, (laughs) except if you make a point of pointing it out. Say, hey, look, did you see my zit? And so I find that we do this often. Like, we'll see kind of the details rather than the bigger picture. And mostly people, when we, you know, view other people, we're looking at the whole picture, the essence of somebody. And here's the big problem about when you're getting in your own way. You get stuck in a rut or you, you're you in that hamster wheel and it feels almost impossible to change or create new patterns. In fact, when you are in that rabbit hole, you can't even see anything else other than what it is, right? It's this like darkness. And just like my clients who can't see themselves in the mirror, But, you know, again, that's just a metaphor for that client. All she could see was the lump and not this gorgeous goddess body that she had. Or maybe all you see is that there are no good men out there rather than 
talking to somebody at the market who could be your soulmate. Or maybe all you can see is that you're too old and that it's too late to find love or change. Rather than just putting up your profile and actually getting some dates to debunk that myth that you have in your head. So ask yourself, Are you happy about who you see in the mirror? Or do you find yourself completely stuck in a rut? And I'm not just talking about your love life, but in many areas of your life. Do you keep attracting the same pattern in relationships and dates? And if your answers pertain to you being stuck and unhappy, then it's time to do something different. It is time to make some serious shifts in your life so that you can get out of your own way and create new habits, new patterns, not just in your love life, but in your life in general. I mean, a lot of you know my story, right? I always like to bring it back to me. I'm not going to rehash the story, but I remember that feeling of being stuck in my black clothes, being stuck looking in the mirror and hating what I saw and hating my life. And I had a very, very dark mindset. And again, I had to make some serious shifts. You know, I I did in the way that I thought. I tried to get out of my own way, but it wasn't until I put myself into action, I did something different and I put on a friggin' red dress that I thought was three sizes too small. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, this isn't too small. This red isn't too bright. This is actually me. But I had to see it to believe it. And that's the thing that I find why people get in their own way is that they can't see something different. It's that rabbit hole and the darkness that I talked about. So it is time to make some serious shifts in your life so that you can get out of your way and create new habits and patterns in your life. And this podcast, I'm like, I seriously want to just kick you in the butt. (laughs) It's time. It's, you know, it's that kind of time of year where a lot of people kind of do the same thing over and over again. You get into a routine and, and this is the perfect time to do something different. So let me, I want to actually start out with talking about reasons why you stay stuck. Okay. You, and, and I'm going to go, there's a lot of reasons, but I want to go over the top five. Number one, usually when people are staying the same is because you are overshooting your goals and you don't have clarity on what your goals are, like that are authentically you. So Either you you make it too hard on yourself by overshooting, like you're making the goal way, way too big, too large, or you're making the goal that's not authentically you. You know, it could be you know, something that maybe you think that you want or that friends and family tell you what you want, but really when you dig deep and you do like a survey on yourself, it's not at all what you want. I see this happen all the time. You know, clients will call me up and they say, hey, you know, I want I want a man. Find me a man. I want my soulmate, you know, and we really dig deep and get into it. And often, often it's not really finding the man. It's finding themselves. But it takes a while to get at that. So, again, like without that clarity, it makes it hard to set those goals that you can really achieve. Um there was this woman that I worked with and she, like, for instance, her goal was wanting kids and a family and her soulmate. And that was all fine and dandy. And everybody should have, you know, kind of what I say, the finish line, you know, what they're striving for. But she was so focused on this ginormous goal of having kids that she was losing what she could do in the moment to get there. And so I really had to break it down. And I said, look, I want you to take that goal and put it on the bookshelf for now because that's not going away. And we're going to, we're definitely going to get there. But right now, what can you do today and tomorrow and maybe just next week in working towards that goal? And so we just started small. 
right? We, we started with just putting her profile up and she was, you know, really disheartened with online dating and she thought there were no good guys out there. And she started getting dates and then she started meeting fabulous guys who actually wanted kids at her age. And so that's what I mean by that. Don't overshoot your goals. The second reason why you remain stuck is you don't have enough leverage or pressure or motivation to do it, quite honestly. Come on. Look, we all need deadlines, right? We need an end game. We need something to work towards. That's like, that's that's human. We all have that. You know, so if you have a goal in mind, but there's no pressure or you don't feel that that need or urgency to do something, you'll just sit on it and you'll wait. And here's the problem with waiting. The, the more you wait, the harder that goal is to achieve, right? Because then it gets scary. It's so far away that it feels like you can't do it. Um, there was a guy that I was working with, another example, he had lost his job and and that was probably the worst thing that could have happened to him because we were you know really getting a lot of traction with his love life and you know he was setting his goals and we had created a schedule so that he could you know really fit his exercise in when he was doing the dating and all that but the minute he lost his job he lost the structure he lost the motivation and guess what Instead, he ended up being obsessed with doing video games all day long, and he didn't exercise, he wasn't dating, and he got stuck in that rabbit hole. So I had to literally pull him out because I hadn't heard from him for so long. That was the problem. He didn't have me kicking his butt. (laughs) So he got reengaged with me, and we, we started back, and he was back on track. But again, we all need that kind of leverage to help us motivate. The third reason why you remain stuck is you don't have accountability. You don't have anybody telling you, go for it, do it. Next week, I want you to do this. You know, we all need cheerleaders. We need that. And I always say, as nice as family and friends are, and they love you dearly, sometimes they're not the best accountability partners. You know, they may join you in the blame game. I see this happen all the time. It's like, well, my friends all agree with me that men suck. Like, well, that's probably not the best accountability partner for you because they're joining you in your misery. They're not helping you achieve the goal of actually finding a great man. So I always tell people, you know, really find that accountability person who can lift you up, who can motivate you and keep you going. The fourth reason why you are probably stuck is that you're doing the same darn thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I mean, come on, we all know that that's the definition of insanity, right? And the problem with that is that if you are doing the same thing and you're not getting the results that you want, you start blaming outside yourself. Perfect example. I was working with this woman. She's a high profile in entertainment um, woman and she said online dating and apps suck. They all uh you know they all have just like a bunch of players on there. And I said, well that might be true, but there's also some fabulous people, you know, and so it, you have to be a little strategic. I said, look, I want you to send me your pictures and just let me let me take a look. No, no, no. I have great pictures, you know, and I I bid on all of them. It, it's not it's not me. It's not the pictures. It's just the guys. I said, okay, great. I get that. I can appreciate that. Send me your profile. So <laughs> anyway, she sends me the profile and Oh my God. Like she had no clue that she, again, she had these same pictures on for years. I mean, she was doing the same thing and then expecting something different to happen every single year. But the truth was, is that her pictures were awful. And it wasn't that, I mean, she's a gorgeous, smoking, beautiful woman, but she had too many pictures. And the ones that she had were like really leaked like she was a party girl, you know, that she wasn't looking for something committed. She had pictures of her and um, not very, very good pictures. Uh, She had like a baseball cap and no makeup and high-fiving guys. And her 
in pictures surrounding herself with like a bunch of people, she really looked like a party girl. So she was sending the wrong message. And here she was trying to attract a committed relationship. So we immediately just changed the pictures to change the result. And it was like, boom, instantaneous. I mean, completely different men started chiming in. This is what I mean. You have to shake up things a little bit. It's like the snowball, right? If you, if, if you have that snowball where all the glitter is and, and you just let it, the glitter kind of sit on the bottom, your perspective of that snowball is the same. And it's not until you shake it up, it actually looks different. Think of that as your life. What can you do different? All right. And the fifth reason why you remain stuck is you get fixated on the wrong thing. Okay. So you, you actually lose sight of what you need to do to create something different. So it's just like the example that I gave you before. My client was fixated on the lump. She totally lost sight of the essence of her and the impact that dress had on her figure, on her confidence, the way she, you know, her whole image. And the thing is, is when you lose sight of what is important, you have a lot of fear built up. And then you, again, you start wasting time. And and the more you sit in that fear, the more time that goes by, the harder it is. Last example I'll, I'll say, because of course, you know me, I always like to tell stories to really highlight what I'm talking about. Um, I'm, re- I'm now working with a woman who, when we first talked, she said, you know, I really want to meet somebody, but I just have no time. I said, well, you know, we mapped out really what her time looked like. And it turns out that she had this dog that was eating all of her time. Like anytime she could go out for happy hour or go out socially, she's like, yeah, but I have to go be my, with my dog. And so her dog became the important thing, but it was also fear-based because if, look, let's be honest, if she didn't have the dog, then she would actually have the time to date. And then, and then if things didn't work out, she would fail. So I think her fear of failure, her fear of getting hurt by men was shielded by the dog. So this is what I mean. If you lose sight of that important thing, the important thing was her dating life, not the dog. (laughs) So think about those things for yourself. What are you doing to remain stuck? Did any of those resonate with you? This is probably one of the most important podcasts I feel like I've done in a long time and important messages. Because when you are stuck in a rut, you are in a trance. It's like you have literally brainwashed yourself into thinking you can't have something different. And I'm here to tell you that you can. But it's going to take work. I'm not going to lie. I mean, my clients who work with me, they work their ass off. Okay. They do their homework. They are coachable. They're open. And it does require some important shifts in the way that you're going about things. This is so important because if you don't, you're going to continue to lose time You're going to continue to attract the same unhealthy relationships and you will continue to be alone. So it's, it's really up to you. And I know what some of you are thinking. You're listening to this and saying, all right, Kim, I, if I knew how to do these things then I would do them, I mean, I want what you're saying, but I just can't. And by the way, it's not all me. You know, it, it's the men too, or if you're a man listening to it, it's the woman too. I'm not totally responsible for all of this. And you're right. You're absolutely right. First off, you, you can't do this on your own. You've already proven that, right? So you, you know, if you can't do it on your own, that's why you're probably, you know, listening to this podcast or you know, doing lots of reading and you're trying to educate yourself. And after I encourage you to hire someone or get a mentor or or somebody who can hold your hand and tell you what they see in the mirror, not what you see in the mirror. So you're right. You're not going to be able to do this on your own. I'm encouraging to actually have someone help you or start taking action on, you know, with yourself. And of course, it's not all on you. You can't control other people. I've said this many times. All you can do is change you 
right? And do something different so that you attract and get a different result. And that's what's so empowering. I'm kind of beating you up today, but I'm also wanting this to be an empowerment because all of you have the ability to take control of your life. You are all so powerful, right? It's not anybody else. It's you. So it, it really is time to make some serious shifts in your life so that you can get out of your own way and create these new habits and patterns in your life. So let's talk about creating new habits because actually there's been a lot of controversy and like how to go about that, right? Um, years ago, I think they thought it took a lot quicker to create new habits, but I was doing some research on it. And on average, it actually takes more than two months before a new behavior actually becomes automatic, 66 days to be exact, right? And really how long it takes to develop a new habit is really, it, there's a lot of variables. It depends on the behavior, the person, and the circumstances. So in other words, if you set your expectations appropriately, the truth is it'll probably take you anywhere from two months to eight months, they're saying, to build a new behavior in your life, not 21 days as it they used to think. So you might think, oh my God, that's so depressing. That is so long. But to me, that I think that that's exciting because first of all, think about it. Like usually you create bad habits or, you know, patterns that you're not happy with over a long period of time. And if you knew that it took only two to eight months to really hone in on something that's achievable, that's small, I mean, how amazing is that? You know, that you can actually reprogram your mindset and create new situations for yourself by doing these things. So I want to go over how to create new habits and patterns. And again, I like to break it down into really like easy, like a list. So here are five things that you can do just, you know, even after you listen to this. Number one, start with a habit that is really small and doable for you. And then increase your habit each day. And the repetition and the success that you're going to feel will kind of build on itself, right? And that's going to build your confidence and validate you to keep you going towards a bigger picture. Um, I did this with a client once and she um, actually, this group that I have, I do a group course right now and um, there are four women in this group. And this, this woman was so vastly, you know, scared of putting herself online and exposing herself. She had not been dating for a really long time. I mean, it's been years. So everything was all new to her. And she's like, Kim, I don't know if I can do this. I, I there's no way I can expose myself by putting a picture on that. I said, that's totally cool. Like you don't have to think about putting a picture up online right now. I said, all I want you to focus on is getting some new clothes that match a sexy image of yourself because she, you know, she really just had work clothes and she didn't see herself as a sexy woman. That was part of her fear. So we've been literally just working on her looking for a red dress. That's it just a red dress. And she started posting pictures and she started like marinating in it and feeling really good about herself in the red dress. That was like step number one. And you know what? When she did it, when she found something, she was so excited. She was like, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe I can wear a red dress. Like I'm, I'm actually getting excited. And so then she started taking selfies, you know, and then we're going to build on that to actually put it up online. And she's finally, after six weeks, ready to put some pictures online and create a profile. This is a woman who was terrified and said to me, point blank, I will not put my pictures up online. So again, if you start small and you do something that's doable and easy, it's going to build your confidence to get there. Number two, use rewards and consequences to motivate yourself. You know, this is what I was saying before. If you don't have that pressure or momentum, you're not going to be so quick to do it. You got to like, you know, give yourself many 
rewards and consequences along the way. So for instance, if you say, okay, like if you're not exercising and you want to create a exercise routine, say, okay, so for five days, I'm going to exercise. And then if I do it, I'm going to give myself a massage, a professional massage. So, you know, figure out what is really rewarding for yourself after you do something that seems pretty either painful or annoying or frustrating or exhausting, right? Um, Then set some long-term rewards for yourself. So going back to the exercise, after you do this over a success enough time and you have these like mini rewards for yourself each five days, then have a long-term goal of going on vacation and putting a bikini on and even putting a picture of yourself in a bikini or a picture of a bikini that you want to wear and you put it on the calendar. That visually and having a timeline is going to motivate you to get there. Now, I'm not saying that's going to help everybody, but that's just an example. So you got to like, you do you, right? You have to think about what motivates you. Number three, do something different than you normally do. Shake up the snowball, as I say. Say yes to a guy that's not your type, okay? No one has a type because if you have a type, it's not working for you, <laughs> right? So do something that I've done this all the time. You know, women who keep getting attracted to the, you know, really hot guys or physically attractive guys or guys that get attracted to these, you know, really hot girls. I say, you know what? I want you to go out with somebody who's not that attractive to you, but has an attraction factor that that is more intellectual and just try it on for size, right? Or try on a red dress if you always wear black or go, you know, take a different route to work and see who you can meet. Shake it up. Number four, stop comparing yourself to others and honor your gifts and your timeline. Again, you do you and turn off the noise around you, it, uh, especially with social media today. You know, how many of you are, you know, spending hours looking on social media, comparing your life to, to theirs and saying, "Ugh, my life sucks. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. And you're spending so much time wishing and thinking that you're not good enough or not doing what other people are doing. Again, you lose sight of the, of what you could change within. I just told one of my clients literally two weeks ago that she had to go on a social media fast because she was spending hours just scrolling through all her social media and comparing herself and getting more and more depressed. On top of it, she was actually watching like The Bachelor and all those dating shows and getting even in a deeper depression because she was saying, oh, I wish my life was that. I said, you know what? First of all, half those posts and those shows don't are not reality, right? <laughs> you know, people don't post post things that are not going right. They usually paint a, a better picture than what it really is for, you know. But the second thing is is I said you're doing you're spending so much energy and time on looking at other people, then then you could spend like that hour actually putting up a profile and starting to date and making some changes for yourself. And so she did, like she held herself to it. She did a social media fest. She said, oh my God, Kim, I didn't realize how addicted I was. Like I didn't realize that. And she started, you know, making time to go out with friends and out in the real world and doing herself, you know, her favor of actually changing, you know, her, her life, her patterns, her, uh, you know, change of events that happened each day because she was stuck. She was completely stuck in that rut. So stop comparing yourself. Number five, get an accountability partner, a mentor. I'm going to just keep hounding that because a lot of times, you know, you need someone to hold you accountable for your actions and recognize you. So it's not just like seeing your roadblocks or, you know, telling you what you're doing wrong. I mean, I, I love coaches and accountability partners and friends who can actually bring you up and praise you and and be that confidant that person said you know what you're doing great keep going keep doing that so 
for instance, if you have a bunch of single friends who are negative Nellies every time you go out and you bitch in the corner of the 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 lounge, then get rid of them. <laughs> get get a set of really great girls that you can go out with who lift you up, who you guys can like, you know, be flirty and fun and positive together because it's going to rub off on each other. So think about who you're surrounding yourself with. And I'm not just talking about someone holding you accountable, but I'm also referring to the people in your life, your environment. If you're around a lot of negativity, think about that for yourself or or people who live in scarcity. Start thinking about how you can attract abundance, how you can attract more positive people by putting yourself in situations where you're actually meeting those people because that's going to lift you up and that's what's going to create change. So hopefully that was helpful and got you all start thinking. I wanted to read a letter that um, I got or a scenario. And actually, this was somebody in my free Facebook group. And those of you who don't know, it's called the Love Makeover Insiders. It's free on Facebook. And she wrote a scenario that was, I actually think was quite common. She said, hi, Kim, I've been in a relationship for eight years for a series of reasons, career focus, some negative experiences, and an overall comfort with being single. As a result, I have trouble imagining myself in a happy and fulfilled long-term relationship or an overall happy and fulfilled personal life. Lack of experience and inability to visualize is a major hurdle, possibly the biggest obstacle. Second, bullying is a common thread in many of my relationships, friendships, romantic, professional, and I have trouble imagining a relationship where I feel safe. This may also be specific form of lack of experience where I have not been terribly selective about who I date, which resulted in having the same kind of negative experience. All I know is that I am done. I'm done with that repeat experience and I will not define the rest of my life. I will do whatever it takes to change it because I am truly fed up. Finally, I am highly career focused and I will be pursuing a full-time doctoral program this fall. As a result, time and energy will be somewhat limited resources. It is very much my pattern to devote all my time to work, which will not help me build a fulfilling personal life. I know I need to change all of these things. I just don't know where to start, so I get overwhelmed and I freeze. Is it even possible to change all of these things, Betty? Woo! I'm overwhelmed, on, honestly, just reading that. Betty, I feel you. And you know, it seems like everything is just hard, right? Like you think about it, it's just hard, it's overwhelming. And let's face it, it builds upon each other. So when you think about it and you look at it in front of you, you see this ginormous mountain and you're looking up at it and it seems just impossible to climb. Now, the good news is, and I loved hearing this, is that you seem like you have a really strong desire to change because you're fed up. And and that's usually when I see people create new habits, quite honestly, they'll get to me or they'll, you know, talk to me at the point where they're like, I am done with doing this thing. I need to change. But here's the problem that I detect already. You are of the perspective that it is one big mountain, and that is a tall task. I mean, no one can leap to the top of the mountain. It was what I was saying before. Everything seems ginormous, and you're overshooting all the things that you want. It it just seems too big to you. You literally have to climb step by step, slowly, to keep your focus in front of you. Don't get ahead of it. Don't get behind it. Just focus right what's in front of you. And you keep saying that you're having a hard time visualizing and imagining things to be different. You said that several times. And the vision that you're having is actually negative, right? You're looking at it as an obstacle. But what if instead you actually saw this as as a good thing? So I want you to imagine that that mountain is actually a beautiful mountain and envision what is on top of it. Get excited about it. 
And it doesn't matter that you don't have experience. You said that also several times. It's what your vision and your dream is. I mean, all the people who have had success, the leaders of the world, you know, people who've talked about going from poverty to abundance, they all have said the same thing. Those people never had it. People who didn't have money before, they don't know what it's like to have money, but they saw it in front of them. They saw it as beautiful. And they created a movie almost out, like in their head and they projected it forward and they saw it. And that's what I want you to, to do, to see it as if it's already happening and that you're going to climb to the top to get there. Do it daily. Visualization is so powerful. The other thing is, you know, again, you're overshooting your goal. So take each problem and try to break it up and create many goals for yourself. So for instance, if bullying is the common theme in your relationships, work on just something small like saying no to people, right? Just, just you know, anytime somebody asks you to do something that you don't want to do, just say no and see what happens. Journal about it. See what it feels like. And do that for the next three weeks and journal about it and see what happens. When you start feeling better and you start feeling empowered, then you move on to the next goal, okay? Finally, it seems like you need accountability. So I, again, I would have somebody holding you accountable to break down these goals, you know, keep you going. It could be anybody, right? So all of you, it's time to make some serious shifts in your life so that you can get out of your own way and create new habits and patterns in your life. And if you're like Betty and you're feeling like completely overwhelmed, I hope that you really think about what is keeping you stuck. And even if you try one or two of those tips that I went over to try to get unstuck, you'll start making movement in your life. So thanks for joining me today. As always, this has been the Charisma Quotient, and I'm your host, of course, Kim Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to experience a free breakthrough call, with me personally, and start learning how to get out of your own way and perhaps hold you accountable, click the link in the show description. I have it right there. You're going to just click the link. You will schedule a time. It's free. You will ask to fill out an application so I can find out a little more about you and we can continue this conversation of cracking this pattern and finally getting a handle on this part of your life. It's time to start making those shifts so that you find love and stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day. <laughs>